Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So today I wanted to pick up on this uh, small little project I've been working on the last couple of days. I want to go through some of the steps to create these pockets here. Um, I also want to show how you can use a ball mill to get the radius on the bottom. We're going to use uh, a little different uh, toolpath pattern in order to machine all of these pockets so that the direction of the tool path is the same on each of them and uh, hopefully uh, we'll learn a couple of things along the way so uh, this is the result that we're after where we pocket it out and then we use a ball mill to put a radius down on the bottom and then we'll come back and we'll chamfer the edges so we have this nice uh, interesting looking feature in this part here okay so let's get right into it so to begin with I'm just gonna create a new file and from here I'm gonna take my um, my geometry and I'm gonna select it all and then I'm gonna copy and then I'm going to paste it into a new drawing. And uh, really the reason why I do this is just so that I can separate separate out the cam tree that I've already generated and, and we can start fresh with each other. Okay. So from here, three axis milling, we're going to run the stock wizard. And then we'll pick up our origin back here and we'll choose OK. Then we're going to go ahead and blank out the stock. Now, for this job, I want to use the same tools that I used in the last job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my tools and then my tool crib. And what I want to do is I want to save this. So that way I can uh, come over to this job and I can go to my tool crib. I can choose import and then I can grab uh, the tool crib so that way when I go to select my tools I can pick the tools that I've already set up okay so now from here let's go ahead and uh, look at our our pocket here so we'll zoom in so we have a, a pocket it's got a radius on the bottom and then it's got a chamfer on the wall so we'll go into the cam tree and we'll choose mill to axis select geometry and we just want to select this face here so we'll click on that face and then we'll hit our space bar so that will uh, select our geometry and you can see there's a preview of it over here in order to set the depth we're gonna do pick bottom and then we'll grab this edge right here and that looks good alright so now for the machining features we're gonna start just with a pocket and I'm gonna remove any other operations and we're gonna just start with the pocket and then for our cutter, let's go to our tool crib. And uh, I want to use, um, yeah, I want to use, uh, let's see, this quarter inch, this end mill. I think that, that will work. Okay, so we're going to use this tool. Now for the pattern, I'm going to use a zigzag pattern at 90 degrees. Okay, and the reason why, let me go ahead and compute this, is I want the tool path to run along in this direction. So when the part is done, uh, that's the, you know, when wherever the tool travels, the path that it travels is left over. You see marks on there. So I want them to look in this direction because that's part of what I want to do. Now, you'll notice that uh, it doesn't follow around the outside. It just does the inside. So one of the options that you have is to profile before or after. I'm going to do a profile after. And I'm also going to drop down my step over and recompute. So this gives me my pocketing tool path to clear the material. Now, I'm, I want to have it go down in more than one step. So I'll go to my parameters and we'll take it in two passes and then also for side allowance uh, zero is what I want on the wall and then I'll recompute so that gives me my two passes to come in here and to remove the pocket if we run the simulation real quick we can get an idea of uh, what's going on so here we can see we have our pocketing tool path for the first pocket 
All right. So now what we want to do is use a ball mill and profile this shape to get this radius on the wall. So we're going to go back and edit this feature. We're going to go to our strategy and we're going to load in a profile rough. Uh, with the profile rough, we want to grab uh, our tool. So that is the right tool that we want to use. And then for our patterns, what we want to use is side roughing and we're gonna say there's an eighth inch on the wall and we want to take this in three passes because we want to walk into the wall and okay so this this one here this is really important system compensation left if we compute this the way that it is right now let me blank my pocket tool path you can see that I'm getting the tool to walk in from the side but you can see the tool is well off the wall because it's being offset but really we don't want to offset it we want to run it right on center line so the way that we adjust that is we go to our pattern and we'll just turn system compensation off and then we'll recompute and now we're gonna get our three passes uh, right on the wall this way it can walk in and put that radius on the wall uh, the only other thing I want to add to my profile is a lead in and lead out so I'll compute that and that looks good so let's go ahead and run this through a simulation. See what we got. Now I'm just going to jump through the pocket routine. So I'll just click on the second operation here and then I'll press uh, play. And here we can see our profile routine taking a couple of passes uh, to put that radius down on the, on the wall there. Okay. So that looks good. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to put this chamfer uh, on the pocket wall. So we're going to do another feature. This is mill to axis, select geometry. So I'm going to go through and click on, click on the edges here. So you can, uh, if you hit S on your keyboard, you can uh, turn the shading on and off and, and that will help with selecting your edges we had a, a face to select on we could choose a, a face but I'm just gonna go through and, and pick these edges here all right so that looks good all right the next thing that we need to do is pick our bottom uh, no the next thing we need to do is choose our strategy so we're gonna say a chamfer next and then from here we're gonna pick our bottom down here. So the chamfer feature, because it, it, it's a come along feature, you can use it with other strategies. It has its own uh, depth settings. So we're gonna pick our bottom here and then we'll just zoom in and we'll just pick this edge right here because that's how deep we wanna go. Now this cutter position shift, what this does is it moves the tool off the wall. So you use, in, instead of cutting right with the tip of the cutter, you use more of the meat of the cutter. So you can adjust this value, but the default usually works well. All right, so now I wanna add a, a lead in and lead out, and let's go ahead and compute that. And uh, that should put the chamfer. Let me go ahead and check my cutter, make sure I got the right one. I did, okay, good. Now, let's go ahead and run this through a simulation and see where we're at. We should have our pocket. We should have our our radius on the bottom and then we should also have our chamfer to break the edge so we got that one we got that one and then this one will come in and put our chamfer there okay so that looks great so now we have this one uh, this one group done and see the thing is is I want the toolpath to run you know uh, parallel along this axis so I don't want to, if I tried to, I could create a new pocket feature for each one of these, but then I have to figure out what the angle is. Not that it's that difficult, but what is a lot easier to do here is to take this setup here and we're going to add a toolpath pattern. And this one's going to be a, a rotate. And we're going to say rotate around... Um, Rotate angle is 120, two copies, and then origin, and we'll choose OK. And then what's going to happen, see, the origin is not the center of the part. It's based off the, the machine setup. So it's based off of this position. We actually need to um, choose a point. So I'm going to do uh, point coordinates, 
and uh, I'll just move this up in Z so it's easy to see. So this is the point that we're going to use to revolve around. So we'll come back, we'll come back over here, and we're going to uh, edit this feature. And this time we're going to do pick, and then we'll grab this position here, and then choose OK. And now you'll see that our uh, tool path is set up for these pockets as we wanted. So let's run it through a simulation. Let me see what's going on. So you'll see that um, <clears throat> it's going to run through the pockets first. So it does all the pockets. Once it's done cutting the pockets, then we're going to come back and put the radius down on the bottom. And then once we're done putting the radius down on the bottom, uh, we'll come back and use the chamfer. So toolpath patterns can uh, make it easy to copy uh, toolpaths that you have uh, programmed with your job. In this case, uh, it made it a lot easier to get the, the uh, pattern that would be left by the cutter uh, in the same direction for all of these as I wanted. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.